Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year to you guys. It is the first video on this channel in this year. So, um, hello Snowball. Oh, by the way, she is heating, so she might be a little loud. Um, she's been crying all morning, all night last night, so I thought about moving spots. But um, the lighting in this room is, is better because it's more of natural light and that's what I like. So anywho, today's video, we are doing your Q&A that I um, asked, I guess, two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> she's going to distract me. I don't know if I should sit here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I asked you guys just, I guess, after New Year's to see what you guys wanted Just listen to her. So I asked you guys on uh, I think New Year's Day to see if you guys had any questions for me. I kind of wanted to start off the Q&A at the beginning of the year so that way those who don't really know me will get to know me in this video hopefully or get to know me a little bit better from before. Um, but yeah so I did glance over some of the questions and um, I think I'm gonna avoid answering personal questions that's related to other people besides myself and um, some family questions that's okay too but um, like let's say there was a question about hubby's work and his family his side of the family is quite private and his work is quite private so I'm gonna keep it as private and respect his privacy so I'm not gonna address those but other than that everything looks um, like I'm gonna answer all your questions. I am excited. Um, so let's get into it. If you guys wanna grab a coffee, tea, I am drinking my favorite. Nice and warm. Okay, the very first comment in the post, I'm just gonna go ahead and go through the list here. Will you, will your family ever visit the Philippines? And does Ed have family there? I, the Philippines have been on my bucket list for the longest time. I think Ed was just traumatized from his last visit, so that's why he never took us back. Um, because, you know, his stuff got stolen, um, he didn't enjoy his time there, so it was overall really bad experience and he didn't want to take us there. I think he's warming up to the idea and I think he, he's definitely excited if we were to go to the Philippines, um, just because it's so long ago and I told him like, you know, things happen for a reason and that type of situation you probably can't avoid so you never know, your experience with us could be different so I'm trying to see if we would go to the Philippines this year, hopefully crossing our fingers during the summertime. Um, but yeah, Baraka is probably one of my uh, bucket lists. And Cebu is also another city that I want to visit as well. Um, and the last part of this question was, does Ed still have family there? I think most of his family is there. I'm not close to his family at all. Like we're more close to my side of the family. I think he has most of his cousins and aunts and uncles there as well. He does have a pretty big family, so I've never met them because I've never been to the Philippines. So that is that question. Next, same question a lot about the Philippines. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, have you ever been to Boracay before? No, I have not. And that is, like I said, it was one of my bucket lists this year. Maybe next year we don't make it. <laughs> Next question we have, do you have any New Year's resolution? Also, what are you most excited about this year? Um, New Year's resolution is probably, I wanna lose 10 pounds. Honest truth, I just wanna lose 10 pounds. I'm a little bit over than, than um, I'm used to, so it feels a little uncomfortable sometimes. Um, I'm not heavy, heavy. I feel like weight gain and losing weight is part of life, and that's normal, so I just feel a little bit more myself if I were to lose that extra five or 10 pounds. I gained quite a bit of weight when I was in Thailand this year, just eating so much food. 
you guys have probably seen all my videos in my other channel and you know the outings that we do with my sister and Erin and everyone back home it was like food 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 <laughs> so it was delicious but then when you come back home and it's like oh now I gotta like take all this weight off so that was kind of like my main goal when I came back was getting back into my exercise routine I'm obviously not like uh exercise kind of person you know I don't like to exercise but I'll I'll if I feel like it I'll push myself so my resolution is of course losing that weight extra weight off um and of course just being more healthier eating a little bit healthier when I'm not filming because filming sometimes you do splurge yourself with cakes you eat a little bit more greasy food um during my like off days I probably juice, I do that now, so I'm gonna try and keep it up. Um, I juice with the kids, so salads here and there. Just overall being a little bit more healthy and of course, we would love to travel more this year. So second part is, what are you most excited about this year? I think the fact that I am no longer going to be in my 30s, it's kind of exciting, it's a milestone. Um, so it's one of those things where am I going to be excited or am I not? But I think I realized that I am going to be excited when I turn 40 in August this year. Yes, I am turning 40. 4-0. I'm no longer going to be in my 30s, which is kind of like, um, bittersweet because the last 10 years in my 30s have been great. So I hope the next era or the next um, decade would be just as good. I think that if you surround yourself with the people that you love, no matter what age in life you are, um, it's going to be a good one. So yeah, I think that's what I'm really excited about is turning 40. And for my 40th, I think I want to go to Paris. So I'm going to try and make that happen. <laughs> um, if not, we'll probably end up somewhere at a beach or something. That's usually what happens every year on our birthday. So next question, which ASMR mukbang people do you watch? Um, obviously I watch my sister. Um, in the beginning, I used to watch um, all the originals like Hunger Cakes, Honey Let's Eat or Honey Eats, Food Delicious. I watch Seoul. I watch everyone who started from the beginning. I don't watch it now as often because I am hooked on my C-dramas. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much where my time goes at night when my kids are, you know, sleeping and everyone's off to bed. Um, but yeah, I watch, what else, Zach. I watch um, Abby ASMR. Um, there's so many, the list just goes on, but those are just a few. Um, next we have Linda and Tony. Are there any YouTubers that you like to watch other than ASMR? So it's kind of like relatable questions. Um, well, I still watch Mr. Beast with the kids when we're eating. We watch Mr. Beast, we watch Darman. Um, I also like to watch unboxing videos and that's one of the reasons why I started doing unboxing videos because I think it's fun number one and I love to see people's reaction, their taste and um, just the surprised look. Well, not surprised because you know what you get, but like just their expression on their face, how happy they are when they get excited and all giddy and all that stuff. Some of the creators like Mel and Melbourne. Um, Lover CC, I watch her as well. I watch Tamara. So those are the top three that I normally watch when they do hauls and stuff. Okay, next question. Hi, Sissy. I love your video. I'm your fan about one year. Can you talk about your childhood? Love you. So I was born and raised in Thailand until the age of seven. I came to Canada when I was seven. So during that time when we were in Thailand, my grandmother actually, um, were the one who raised us, me and my sister, um, because my mom had to go to the city and work. That's how it was back then. Um, and then she was able to come to Canada. So we came here in 1992. So I was about, yeah, eight, roughly. I had a lot of friends in Thailand. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up here um, just because, you know, it's, I think, 
I don't know, for some reason, it's just harder to make friends here <laughs> when, when, when you're a foreigner and you don't really speak the language. And I was quite shy. So yeah, I didn't really, I had a few good friends. I don't know, I don't really remember much, but I knew I had a really fun childhood back in Thailand. And coming here was more like a culture shock back then just because number one, we didn't know where the heck we were going. All we knew was going out of the country. And um, it's kind of like a blur now, but <laughs> I knew I had a good childhood because I'm still happy and it just brings me so much good memories when I actually do remember some of the memories. So, um, okay, so next question. Hi there, do a Q&A, Happy New Year, family love. Okay, that's not a question, Never mind. Um, a lot of comments, so which I appreciate. Um, my question is, if you could visit one country from each continent, oh my God, each continent. <laughs> Let's say one you haven't been before, which country, countries, would you visit? Um, I would love to go to Europe. I would definitely want to try to go to London, Paris, Italy, Spain, um, just all over Europe. I would love to do a backpack and just hit all those cities in like two weeks or so. I don't know, that's, that's like pushing it, but two weeks. <laughs> um, and I also would love to go to Dubai. Dubai is also one of my the countries that I would love to visit. Also, Australia is is also on my radar. Um, where else? Australia. I would love to go Maldives. Um, so yeah, those are the countries that I would love to visit. Okay, next question. Did you and Ed ever have a big wedding combining both cultures or did you have a small intimate one with family and few close friends? Okay. Ed and I actually never had a huge wedding. Actually, we just had a ceremony, a simple ceremony. And we, his dad was actually the one who married us because he had a license to marry and he was also a pastor. So we just had our family, our immediate family. And it was just really just a signing of, you know, the papers and going over our vows. And we just had a small, like, dinner and that was it. Um, at that time I was also already seven months pregnant and we were kind of like on the limb of whether we should get married that time or not or should we wait to do it after but um, both side of the parents, um, Ed's and mine, um, my mom was like well you should bless the child so that um, you guys are one. So that's what we did. And obviously we never regret not having a big wedding. I think if you were to ask me now, would we have another wedding to celebrate? I don't think so because I've seen the stress of <laughs> having a wedding and um, yeah, it's just, it's just too much. Like I think we definitely made the right choice back then to just do it really simple. And um, I don't think he remembers much because he was, he had a bee sting on his um, arm, like a huge, and he was like allergic. So he was on medication and he was high as a kite on drugs, like not drugs, but like medication. Um, so he was like out of it. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh my God, this is happening right now. That That's the only kind of like, memory that I have that stood out except for of course saying our vows and our I do's but he was like oh like you know he was just like really like lightheaded so yeah that is a moment to remember definitely for sure that stood out um the people that was there of course is my mom my sister um who else was there his sisters his parents a couple of uh friends of ours and that was it really it was just honestly lasted about an hour that was it and we ate afterwards and went home so that's my wedding story um but the only thing that i kind of wanted to do afterwards like when the kids were a little bit bigger well, well when nico was a little bit bigger maybe around the age of two um i still wanted to take um wedding photos but we we ended up not doing it for some reason i can't remember what the reason was but we just we just never got around to do it and I don't think I cared too much back then either. So, hey, we've been together for almost 20 years now. And um, yeah, 
that was a day to remember. <laughs> Next question, is YouTube your only source of income? For me, yes. Um, of course, we have other sources of income, but for myself, YouTube is my main source of income. Um, I have a mukbang channel, ASMR channel, as you guys know, and of course, this channel. I became a full-time YouTuber in 2018. No, 2019, sorry. Uh, I started on 2018 um, and I had a full-time job back then. Um, I think there was someone else that asked about what I did before I became a YouTuber. So I'll continue on that sentence in a little bit. Okay, next question. What are your thoughts on why the two people are not meant to be together, but God still arranged them to meet? I just simply think it's faith and you're meant to be with that person if not if they're here for a short time of your life then it's just it comes and goes like a season right so and i believe that those who are meant to be in your life will always be in your life um but yeah it has a lot to do with fate i think for sure that's my thought anyways <laughs> hopefully that makes sense um okay so any plans on doing a collab with other youtubers maybe a mukbang video um i think we're past that stage where collaborations are happening like in the beginning when we started our um, mukbang channel um there was a lot of collaborations with other youtubers and i think everyone is just doing their own thing now next question we have what are you looking forward to see when you go to the philippines um just what it's all about like what does the philippines look like um food number one of course places beaches i know they have a lot of beautiful beaches and of course um the culture like i i've known a lot of filipinos like i've always been friends with Filipinos in high school. My best friends were Filipinos. So um, I know what Philippines has to offer. I just wanna experience it myself. Um, yeah, I know you have beaches there. I know you love beaches. We got many beautiful beaches, you're right. So I would love to check out the beaches for sure. So next question, what is the best place in Thailand you could recommend? If you watch my vlogs, the places that I went, those are the places that I would recommend. Um, if you're talking about beaches, definitely Grabi because it has more option for you. You can go to Phuket for a day tour. You can do the islands like I mentioned. Um, if you're looking for nature, Chiang Mai, although I've never been to Chiang Mai, but I've heard many <laughs> good stories from my sister and my cousin because they've been to Chiang Mai. If you're talking about Bangkok, definitely. Bangkok is more of a like nightlife, city life. We definitely spend a lot of time eating and shopping in Bangkok. Um, if you go outside of Bangkok, obviously there's other sightseeing places like the temple. There is the floating market that you can also visit. So there is a lot to do in Bangkok if you were to ask me, but if you were to stay in central Bangkok, I say stay where I stayed. Siam area is where you wanna be. It's central and it's easy to get to. And most importantly, it's not hard to find food at all in that area. I mean, Thailand's fairly easy to find authentic Thai food, but um, there's street vendors, there's, you know, the mall food, which is still amazing because everything in Thailand is, is Honestly, I've never really had a bad dish. That's how good it is. So uh, maybe one or two, but most places are, are still really delicious. So not hard to find food at all if you're talking about authentic Thai food. Um, okay, so next question. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Uh, why till this moment have you not tried Egyptian food? I'm sorry. Sometimes your request is, is out of my reach. There's no place, I can't, I don't know how to make Egyptian food. Um, it's really hard to find Middle Eastern food here. Um, some places are quite further out from where I live, so I can't really get to. But I would love to try it, like I think um, we do all sorts of foods in our other channel. Um, we try to eat other foods. I know you guys see a lot of sushi and fast food, but we do venture out. It might not be as often, but we do try different foods. So how was your wedding? I've answered that. 
Happy New Year! When is your next vlog? <laughs> I'm very bored and you need to upload videos like every day for us. JK, love you girl. Aww. Okay, so this channel when I started, it was more of a casual channel. Obviously, my time and effort will definitely go to, you know, any let's eat. And this is just another outlet of mine to kind of like share with you guys, share a little bit of my life, share a little bit of the family, share a little bit of what I love. Um, and you know, sometimes I do get lazy, I gotta be honest, because you know, you always have to talk to the camera and I'm not saying that it's like a bad thing, but sometimes you just want to just do nothing and just chill. And that's what I've been doing for the first two weeks of this new year and just taking the time off and just relaxing. That's why I haven't been vlogging, but I love you guys. Of course, I'm going to continue the vlog and, um, you know, as long as you guys love watching me, I will continue to create content and be here on YouTube. Um, are you close with your dad? No, I'm not close with my dad at all. Um, we used to be really close. He has another family, which obviously I'm not going to talk about. Um, my mom and him divorced when I was little, probably the age of six or something. We used to communicate here and there before, but he stopped communicating and I just also stopped communicating. So yeah, no, I'm not close with my dad. Um, my mom raised us, she provided for us, and we love her to death. My sister and I will do anything for her, so she is our queen. What is your favorite alcohol beverage? My favorite is the one with the polka dot. I forget what it's called, but I'll, I'll put the name in the description or on the screen here for you. Um, it's red wine. It's kind of like sangria red wine. It's so smooth. Um, and yeah, I drank that for New Year's, Christmas, and um, two bottles is good for me. So I love it. I also like Bellinis. Um, Bellinis or anything that's sweet is what I like. I don't like anything that has too much bitterness or the taste of alcohol. Um, so I like something sweet and lately I've been drinking beer for some reason. Um, I never liked beer until I went to Thailand and started drinking Singa or um, the green one which is called Chang. It was it was pretty good so I, I do like beer now. Um, never thought I would be a beer kind of girl but um, yeah, beer is sometimes really good. Moving on, we have Melissa. Hi, Sissy. I've been following you from your... Fighting. I want to know what is your favorite hobby or things you love to do in your spa space time, I guess spare time, other than YouTube. Um, I love to watch my movies, my C-dramas. I think that's the only downtime I have is during the night. I get to watch um, that and I sleep really late. Um, what do I like to do during my spare time? I like to sleep. I love sleeping. Sleeping is like, if that could be a hobby, I would do that as a hobby. <laughs> no joke, like I love to sleep in um, just because I am up at night. I'm up till 2, 3 a.m. sometimes editing and then watching my movies and then I would wake up in the morning and drop the kids off in the morning so my sleeping habits are like on and off it's not like consistent it's um when I feel tired I'll just go to sleep and normally at night I don't feel tired I don't know why it's just the way I've been since high school like I remember going to sleep late at night, like 12, 1 sometimes, even during school time. So um, I got that habit and I never really broke that habit. I would still get up um, if I need to get up, like let's say, of course, dropping off the kids or if we had an appointment, I'll wake up for those. But if I don't have anything to do, I love to sleep in as late as possible, probably around 10 is my um, wake up time. But yeah, hobby wise, I don't know. I do craft with Emma sometimes. Like we made this bracelet together or this charm together. She's she's really into 
um, crafting right now so this is something that she's into so we do that um, hang out with my kids mostly we go out as a family a lot just to wherever like out to eat um, to the mall to the park when they were little so just just random things really wow four question in one okay so I think I already answer what time you sleep like I said, I sleep really late at night. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to do after you wake up? I like to just lie in bed for at least half an hour, trying to wake myself up, um, play on my phone, check Instagram on my phone or YouTube. Um, that's like the first half hour pretty much. And then what time do you usually wake up? I wake up anywhere from if it's a school day, 7 a.m. I'm up preparing, you know, the kids food and lunches. What do you do after I finish filming? I think this is probably referring to like a mukbang or ASMR. I either clean up if it's an ASMR or mukbang videos. It's there's a lot of mess before I do my videos. So we clean up. Um, once everything is done that, honestly, I just relax, lounge around, go on my phone, watch my shows. And um, that's pretty much it. Like. Nothing too crazy. I edit at night, so I don't really edit right away when I'm done my videos. Um, so I take time to do that at night. That way I can do whatever during the day with the kids. Long time fan slash subscribers. Your unboxing videos are fabulous. My prize procession is my Allegory Birkin. That's amazing. Would you ever do a meet and greet in the US? Have you ever thought about writing a cookbook? Meet and greet, I find it. It's too intense. I don't know. I, I don't like the idea of having you guys to meet me somewhere. Um, to me, that's a little bit awkward because I don't find myself a celebrity or a, that has that status to do a meet and greet. Like if you were to run into me, of course, you know, please do say hi. Please ask for photos if you want to because I know some people... Um, are shy to ask those but if you see us please feel free to approach us we don't bite we're pretty normal so please feel free to 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 approach us or say hi what are some of your bucket lists oh sorry would you ever write a cooking book no because i'm not a good cook at all i don't think i'm a, i'm that great of a cook to be publishing a book but um you know, I only cook the, the the dishes that I know I'm good at. Other than that, I just stay away from. Would you like to live Thai in Thailand permanently? I would love to live in Thailand permanently, to be honest. I think I would retire there if I had the choice because um, Thailand still has my heart and I will always have my heart. That's my home. Um, yeah, it's just there's so much things to do. And it's more, um, I guess, warm, you know, because my entire family is there and you're never um, by yourself, pretty much. You With somebody, like I said earlier, family is always around and that's the best thing ever is to have family that you love. Um, so yeah, I would definitely live in Thailand. I saw for Christmas you guys got a ube flan cake. It looks good. Where did you get it from? Hubby got it. So I got it from a Filipino baker in town. I'm not sure where he got it from. So excited for Hawaii vlog. Do you have anything planned for Hawaii? We actually never really plan our trip unless we're doing a tour, which we rarely do. Um, so we're just gonna wing it. Of course, we're gonna go search for some good food places, hit the beach, maybe go up to the mountains this time and do a little bit of shopping. There's always, um, always room for shopping. <laughs> Happy New Year. If you and hubby could only choose one store to shop for clothes, where would it be? Love from Toronto. You guys should come visit. <laughs> if I had to just choose one, it would probably be Aritzia. 80% of my clothes in my closet are from Aritzia. I love them. It's They have classic pieces. They also have new pieces um, every season. So I shop there a lot. Um, 
I wouldn't choose any of the designer brand just because it's not your everyday clothes. Um, it's just, you know, it's nice to dress up in designer clothes, which I do when we go out. Um, but for every day, I think Aritzia is my go-to store. For hubby, I think he would probably choose um, Gymshark or Lululemon just because he's very cash and that's just like everyday attire so something basic and simple um love your whole vibe and watching your videos my question did your sister move to from canada i don't know if i missed something but yeah got curious and there's any more children in your future or are you done um my sister did not move to from canada she's coming back <laughs> very soon um and then for children i think i am done like i don't think i'll have any more kids i actually thought about it the other day and was like hmm, what if the kids are like you know they don't need me anymore they're starting to kind of do their own thing um especially the little one emma i'm trying to keep her in my little <laughs> pocket as much as possible but she's kind of starting to like do my own stuff now which is kind of like bittersweet because I've always had my kids always with me you know from day one so yeah I mean I really miss the age between two to five that's I think that's the most fun age and the most precious age is just they're so cute and they listen to you and they just love you not that they don't love you now but like you know what I mean like they're just tiny like uh, I just wish that would be the age that they could stay there forever two to five I'm good but being pregnant and all that I, I don't want to go through that stage and I don't want to go through the stroller stage and the car seat stage and all that stuff. I'm I'm past that. So no more kids for sure. Are you a stay-at-home mom? And technically YouTube is my job. And if you were to start a business, what kind of business would it be? I think it would probably be like an online store, like jewelry. I love jewelry. I would be... Um, that's why I got so excited when Emma started making her own um, earrings and bracelets and key charms because that's kind of like a line of like jewelry making and um, I was excited for her so we um, fully support her on that if she wants to be a jewelry maker in the future go ahead yeah I would love to open up um, my own jewelry brand I love dainty jewelry um, yeah, anything that has to do with jewelry, I'm all for it. Favorite rapper, favorite R&B, the 90s and the early 2000s. Speaking of the early 90s and 2000s, I have been listening to Keisha Cole nonstop. Her song is coming back. The other day, Emma was like, Mom, you should listen to the song Love because um, it came up on her TikTok feed or something and she has it on her playlist now. I'm like, how do you know that song? That song is like old school song. Like I used to listen to that when I was in like high school, like, you know, first breakup is something that you would listen to. So Keisha Cole, Deborah Cox, um, Brandy. I listened to Brandy, just like the love song, the R&B love song. Usher also. In terms of rapper, I don't really listen to rap, rap, like Drake once in a while because of Nico, um, 50 Cent maybe in the club back in the day, and then also Puff Daddy, yeah, 112, I love 112. Ray J's song also came onto my playlist the other day as well, so kind of like the 90s and the 2000s are coming back, which is really good to see because, you know, the songs nowadays are either K-pop or really rapper songs so i i'm lost with when it comes to new songs so i still stick to my high school song old school song that's my playlist or thai song so what inspires you to make mukbangs video in the first place the reason why we actually got into asmr and mukbang is of course my sister she kind of led the way for us and um, we were always well i was always curious because the space was very new and there wasn't a lot of ASMR artists or mukbang. Um, I would definitely consider my sister and Hungry Cakes and um, Kimmy Eats are, you know, the OGs of mukbang. So um, so my sister really inspired us to, to start our own channel and it was fun to make it with the kids. So that's why we kept it as a family channel. Hmm. 
lost the page that I was on. So I am just gonna quickly run through these questions to see if there's anyone that has a different question than what I've already answered. Um, a lot about Thailand, if I were to move there. Favorite food would have to be sushi, Thai food, any Asian food, I love Chinese food. Korean food is also one of my faves as well. Um, so yeah, I. Those are my top five, I would say. Do you plan on following your sister's food steps on selling your merch or snacks or upcoming recipes that you like? I don't think so. I think that is another chapter, which is um, one that I would not go through because I know there's a lot of work behind it and a lot of steps in order to make that happen. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> How much do you make on YouTube? Wondering if that would be an option for me to start a channel. So I get a lot of questions about how to start your own YouTube and what steps you should take um, and how much money you um, can earn. Honestly, YouTube is a great source of income. It's definitely provided our family with a lifestyle that we have, so we're thankful for that. Um, but honestly, YouTube is not for everyone. <laughs> everyone thinks that it's so easy to start up. Um, I mean, I do encourage you guys to, if that's what you wanna do, definitely go for it. But know that um, you have to keep at it. You have to be consistent. You gotta put your full effort into making that happen first like it's not like an overnight success um, there's going to be times where you upload so many videos and you get little views that's one of the challenges um, for sure when i started my channel um, it was on the rise of mukbangers and asmr artists back then um, it still is a little bit it's like a wave right so we were caught up in that whole wave and now we just continued it and i'm so lucky that we have our fan base and you guys are loyal and you guys keep coming back um, which we're so thankful for but definitely youtube is not for everyone but I do encourage you to, you know, do and try it out. If it's not it, then don't be disappointed because, um, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough space. Even though it's a big space, um, that's pretty much all I can say. Is if you want to try it out, go for it. You know, create the content that you want to create and um, keep at it. Be consistent. Don't just do it because you want to make a video go viral. That's you know, it's like one in a million, you know? Um, but then what, what happens after that viral video goes viral? What are you gonna do after? So it's like, you gotta maintain it and keep at it. And that's what I've done for the past five years. You've seen my ASMR mukbang channel. There's been consistency. There's always been a video uploaded most I like I think six days in a week the only days that I don't upload are Mondays and Sundays so yeah consistent is key that's number one passion have a passion for what you want to create the content and stick with it how did you know what you were going to name them for Nicholas Ed was the one who actually named him he was named after his um, uncle that he was close to and for me, if I would have chose Nicholas's name, it would be, well, he has a middle name. His middle name is Owen after my brother. So we kind of both got to choose his name. Um, but for Emma, it's just Emma. Like I knew I wanted a girl uh, to be named Emma. There was other names in the mix, like Emmeline, um, Emmy, um, but I just stuck with Emma. I just love that name and I named her Emma. And She's an Emma. <laughs> what is your favorite place to shop instead of LV now? In terms of designer, it would still have to be Chanel and Hermes. Um, yeah, I just love the two brands. Those are my top two. A lot of people ask me, how come you don't like Gucci? How come you don't like Dior or Balenciaga or any other high-end um, brands? Number one, I don't like Gucci. Um, I only like the shoes. That's it. That's that's all I like from Gucci. I think their handbags are, are 
I don't know. I just I never gravitated to them. I had one and I sold it because I, I don't know why I bought it. <laughs> um, it was kind of like a speedy with the monogram um, uh, Gucci logo all over the bag. So I got rid of that, that like a year after I bought it. And ever since then, I never really shopped again except for one item from a long, long time ago, which is a sandal. But Javi does love Gucci. He loves Gucci for some reason. Um, Dior is another brand that I love. Actually, I really like their handbags um, and their clothing. I actually prefer their, their ready to wear more than their handbags. Um, I don't have any Dior handbags. That's a shocker, yes. Um, I, I feel like I fit more into Dior line but I never got myself to kind of shop. That makes sense. Like I didn't want to get into it. Like if I were to get into it, it would be, ah, uh, I tell you, no, like it's a bad idea. I would get so addicted and I would just continue to shop. So I, I only want to stick with Hermes and Chanel. That's it. And which handbag and jewelry um, would you get this 2024? Um, Radar right now for me, mm, for Chanel, I think that little mini Kelly, the top handle one, I definitely think that's impossible, but it's on my radar. If I happen to find one, I would definitely grab it right away. Um, of course, a mini Kelly from Hermes or another Birkin, which is what I would ask for my quota bag this year. Jewelry wise, I do love um, Van Cleef. I would love to get another um, Van Cleef Alhambra bracelet, maybe in Malachite, the green one, because um, I have the gold and the mother of pearl. And um, I think I would probably do another bracelet from Hermes or earrings. We have a question from Grace, been a long time follower. Is Sass and Sissy your real name? And are they Thai names? No, they're not. They are just nicknames for our full name, which I won't say because um, I just like to keep that private. Um, but it does start with Sass. Like both my sister and I could be called Sass, but I got Sissy and she got Sass. Um, they were given to us when we came to Canada. We have Jessica, was being a YouTuber always your dream job? I love your videos, by the way. You have such a wonderful family. Happy New Year, Happy New Year's as well. YouTube was actually never a dream job of mine. I never thought that I would become a YouTuber. Um, I'm actually an introvert, so me talking to a camera or vlogging in an open space, sometimes I get paranoid because people are watching you, you know, but I, I just consider it as, you know what, I'm just filming for you guys. I'm talking to you guys. So it kind of goes away after, but, um, yeah, I'm an introvert. Like I don't really like to socialize as much. I have a very small, um, close friends and that is it. Like if you are in my circle, then you are important to me. If you're not, then you're just an acquaintance that makes sense but my dream job um i don't think i had a dream job like maybe being a flight attendant um but then again i was afraid of flying so that kind of kicked to the curve i've always wanted to be a nurse as well just in healthcare. i did take um a few of healthcare courses back when i was in college and um yeah, but never really went through it. So I was wondering if you and your family would ever do a marathon or half a marathon. <laughs> uh, no, no for me. No, I'm not a runner. I would give up, I don't know, two kilometers in and I would wave the white flag, honestly. Uh, I don't think Ed would do one either. Maybe my sister, that's the only one because uh, she loves to run. So... I would also like to see more cooking videos. Yes, more cooking videos will come in the future, 2024. Um, what are some of your favorite memories of the kids growing up? Uh, there's so many memories to look back on when they were younger. We took a lot of trips, but my favorite one would probably be when I took them back to Thailand for the very first time in a long time. They stepped into the muddy rice field and they were so excited to get dirty. Um, just experience what I experienced when I was younger. 
um, when I was a kid. It just brings me so many good memories when I went to the rice field with my my grandma, um, my cousin. We were just playing in the dirt, just um, kind of catch the crab in the muddy water and the fish and we actually swam, like the kids actually swam in the the rice field because there was water and the water level was high enough for them to swim. And they just enjoyed it so much that I was like, my kids are just so down to earth and they're not afraid to get dirty. Um, till this day, Nico still asks to go do the rice field activity. So, which is, which is very important to me because that's my roots. And I'm so glad that I was able to share that moment with them and they got to experience it. Any chance we see a cooking videos and learning Thai recipes? Yes, I'm planning to do more cooking videos on this channel if you guys would like to see that. I would definitely share my recipes. Like I don't have a lot of Thai recipes, but I'll I'll show you guys what I love to cook. Had there ever been a time that you were tired of doing ASMR videos? Yes, sometimes I would uh, say I don't want to eat today. Let's say I just want to relax and not film a video and just enjoy my food because it's a different feeling when you're eating in front of the camera and just eating and you know watching a show on your phone or the tv and or eating with somebody else because you kind of have to be proper in asmr videos you kind of have to be soft and gentle and not bang your hand or else i'll make too much noise or when you try to chew so you don't slap or you know those kind of noise is is a little bit different than a mukbang mukbangs are more casual and you can just eat you get to talk to somebody and you get to just eat at a good pace but yeah sometimes i just when i see the food i'm like oh i just wanna i just wanna dig in and eat that's the only time where i'm tired of doing asmr videos is when i see the food in front of me and it looks so good and you just want to just munch on it but you can't so that would be the only time but other than that i don't really get tired of doing asmr videos unless i'm like traveling and i know i have to film a video for the channel and I want to go out. <laughs> That's the only exception I would say. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Miss Sissy, is it difficult for you to learn a new language? Um, have you ever felt language barrier? Um, maybe when I was a lot younger, like when I first came to Canada, I definitely felt that huge barrier because you know when you're new to a country you don't know the language you're intimidated by you know the people that can speak fluently and um but for now like i don't think like no i don't feel that it's a barrier at all i would love to learn other languages like um because i watch a lot of sea dramas i would love to learn mandarin or chinese um, Korean also would be a great language to learn um, and Thai I would love to read to be able to read like I can read certain words um, but like just my sister can type my sister can um, fully read a sentence like I can pick up a couple words like the easy words um, but I can understand so which I'm so happy that I kept like learning or understanding Thai and um, what helped me was watching Thai soap operas or Thai TV shows and movies so that just kept kept me going so glad I did that so we are now finally at the very last question I know this Q&A was quite long it was it took me by surprise too I thought it was gonna be kind of like a quick Q&A answer and question how much do you earn through YouTube that's one question. Number two, what's your education qualification? And do you purchase your luxury items like bags, jewelry with your own money? Okay, so let's do the first question. How much do I earn through YouTube? So YouTube pays really well. <laughs> um, but I'm not going to give you guys the exact figures. It's just like me broadcasting how much I make on YouTube. Um, but it pays quite well. It's probably equivalent to... Um, a salary of a doctor, a high profession, um, maybe double that. Um, in terms of education, I did go to college right after high school, but I didn't complete the course because 
I kind of did college um, because I felt like I had to go to college. So I did drop out. So you can definitely say that I'm a college dropout. So my certificate would be just a high school diploma. I just figured that me working full time, I was at that time um, in retail. I worked in retail for about 10 years. I worked myself all the way from being a sales associates to management. The highest position in retail I was um, district merchandiser. So what that means is you are in charge of the entire, let's say BC, for example, I would go to store to store and kind of like set up, you know, store openings, set up their visual. So that's what I love to do. And I kind of stuck with it for a long, long time. And I was still in retail until I found YouTube. So that was kind of like my career path. Um, one thing that I would share is the companies that I worked for was Guess, BB, when BB was like it back then. I also used to work for Buffalo and I used to work for The Gap. The very beginning of my retail career was The Gap. Last questions, do you purchase luxury items like bags really through your own money? Yes, I do. Unless it's a collaboration with a company, which I don't really do as often. The only company that um, I did collab with, of course, is Idol because I love them. And um, yeah, everything that I unbox with my unboxing is from my own money. There you have it, you guys. I hope that this answers all of your questions. I'm sorry if I missed a couple or if I skipped you, um, but that is all your question from the post that I did. Um, a couple weeks ago. So hopefully you've gotten to know me a little bit better. Um, if you have any more questions in the future, and if you like these types of Q&A videos, I know it's a long one. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.